Houston, Texas, where the ceremonies have officially begun. Four days of mourning for President H.W. Bush. He is being uh, carried into the hearse where he is going to be transported to the airport and taken later to the U.S. Capitol where he will sit and, of course, people will come in and pay his respects and he will be on his final flight to Air Force One yep. later this evening. Uh, of course, will be uh, eulogized uh, by uh, President George W. Bush Wednesday at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Obviously, uh, one of the events in what will be a week-long of proceedings after he is held in state until Wednesday and then uh, uh, taken back to Texas for burial. Uh, it's been um, about 12 years since we last laid a president to rest. Uh, so it's had a lot of after effects. Uh, government, of course, markets will be closed on Wednesday. Uh, we likely won't hear, for example, from Powell, as we were planning to hear uh, on the Hill on Wednesday. Uh, and then NYSC will be closed. And all the crazy political rhetoric we're used to will be put on hold for a while. So the honorary poll bearers for, the, for this first movement of the presidential remains are members of Bush's Secret Service detail and also accompanying his remains will be members of the family and uh, also apparently Sully H.W. Bush, the late president's Labrador yes. retriever service dog. Uh, joining us this morning, two men who knew the president personally, Ed Rogers, the veteran senior advisor to both the Bush and Reagan White Houses, a former Minnesota congressman, Vin Weber, who was a member of the House Republican leadership during the H.W. Bush administration. Gentlemen, our thoughts are with the president's family and his friends, so thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Uh, Ed, a lot's been, a lot's been written. Uh, Dan Quayle with a, uh, an op-ed today in the Journal talking about his line, be prepared and be loyal. He says, nothing was ever a big show with George Bush. The theatrics of politics ran against his nature and his upbringing. A, a lot's been said this week uh, and this weekend about how he managed to mix uh, tenacity and competitiveness with grace. Yeah, that's very well said. And an interesting thing about Bush, he came into the presidency at the dawn of something of a new political era, the era that is referred to as the permanent campaign where there was really no hiatus between campaigning and governing. And Bush didn't like that. That didn't suit him. He thought of politics, or at least campaign politics, as a seasonal business. And that being a gentleman was almost impossible during the course of a campaign. So he thought campaigns should be brief. They were what they were, but they were a means to govern. And the notion that you would be campaigning all the time uh, throughout the duration of your tenure in office was offensive to him. Again, he wanted campaigns to be short, brief, get to the point and get them over with. So you had like people like Lee Atwater and Roger Ailes that I worked for, kept them on a short lease, knew they were necessary, but it, the campaign part of politics isn't something George Bush relished. He was not a campaign animal. Then it strikes me that the, the news of the day today, and then we cover the markets and the economy, is about China and this historic meeting between President Xi and President Trump. Went back over the weekend to look at how sta Chinese state media covered the passing of President Bush. Mm -hmm. I mean, glowing. Uh, one of the papers called him a statesman of vision. And President Xi even in Argentina made a point to, to recognize the passing. They considered him a friend. Can you talk a little bit about his legacy in opening diplomatic relations as our President Reagan and, and then his, his own lasting legacy in uh, China? I think that the contributions of George H.W. Bush to foreign policy and to shaping the world that we live in today can hardly be overstated. I mean, he, as ambassador or liaison to China, he initiated the, the much of the improvement in the relationship with China that uh, has gone forward for now several decades. And of course, as, uh, as President of the United States, he both presided over the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the liberation uh, of Kuwait from Saddam Hussein. These are massive historical accomplishments, but as we've already said, this is a president that didn't like to talk in hyperbole about himself. And so uh, maybe it's time for the rest of us to talk about hy in hyperbole about his accomplishments.